Well, hello, Anchor Point. Uh, it's good to be with you uh, virtually again. My name's Craig. I'm on the preaching team here at Anchor Point Church, and I hope this finds you very, very well. As you know, we've been going through Matthew's Gospel together as a church, and of late we've been studying uh, the section from the end of chapter 9 of Matthew's Gospel, verse 35, all the way through the end of chapter 10 of Matthew's Gospel, and verse 42. And we've been walking through this text together and trying to make some points of connection with our own lives and commitment to being disciples of Jesus. And so I simply want to summarize uh, this text for you and maybe make a couple of comments uh, that hopefully will bless you as you study this text together as a group this week. So remember in chapter 9 and verse 35 that we saw Jesus continuing to embark on this healing uh, ministry, and this teaching ministry that we've seen him doing all through Matthew's gospel. And it says that he continued to go through all the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. And importantly, we read that Jesus saw all these people and he was moved with compassion for them. That's why he sent the 12 out in the first place. This whole text we've been studying is that the Lord Jesus was moved with compassion for these poor, lost, wayward people in front of him who had been abandoned and mistreated by the shepherds who God had placed over them. And so as Christians, as we seek to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, we too need to remember that we are to be compassionate. It's so easy today to be caught up in the rudeness and mean-spiritedness of our time. But when Jesus was faced with people who were struggling, he was compassionate. He had pity on them. So I hope we'll all remember that as we Uh, seek to live out our lives as well. From there, he asked his disciples to pray for workers to be sent out into the harvest, which we should all be doing. And we see that in response, 12 men were called, 12 disciples were called who were named apostles at the beginning of chapter 10, Simon and Peter and Andrew and James and John and, and so on. And after he calls them, the rest of the text in chapter 10 is Jesus sending them out with instructions and with words of warning and exhortation and uh, promises. So at first, uh, in, in verses 5 and through verse 14, he tells his disciples, his apostles, how they are to behave on this short-term mission trip. They're to go throughout Galilee, ministering only to the Jews at this point, proclaiming the same words that Jesus proclaimed, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He gave them authority to do the same mighty works that he himself did. He told them to rely on God's provision for them through the people who would receive them. They didn't need to carry a bunch of money. They didn't have to worry about providing for themselves, but they could trust the Lord to provide for them as they went. Moving on through from verses uh, 16 and really all the way through verse 39, Jesus gives a long extended talk about persecution. He teaches us that persecution is sure to come as we seek to live out our calling as disciples of the Lord. And so he warns his apostles to be wise, to be careful, to be innocent, to walk blamelessly, to beware of men. They'll be delivered over, they'll be flogged, they'll be dragged before governors and kings and so on and so forth. They'll be hated by all, verse 22. He then continues that we have to expect this because we have to be like our master. Our master, the Lord Jesus himself, was persecuted. He was spoken against. He was afflicted. And at the end of his life, he picked up a cross and carried it. He was tortured and beaten and finally crucified. And really this whole text tells us that we need to expect the same. We need to be prepared for the same. And above all, if you look at verse uh, 38 and 39, whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. Our willingness to endure hardship, persecution, even death for the Lord is what will mark us out as true and worthy disciples. And all this really serves to set our expectations. We can't think that 
our paths of following Jesus will be easy. It's going to be hard. And all throughout this text, he also gives us a couple of promises that we can hang on to. He tells us in verse 20 that when the apostles would be given over, that they would not be alone, the Lord would be with them. Through the Spirit in them, the Lord would testify on their behalf. He would speak the words that they didn't know how to say. So as we consider the prospect of persecution, we don't have to be afraid that we'll be left alone, orphaned, forsaken by God. No, but he will attend very closely to us. He will be intimately near to us. And we will be able to endure with him as our strength. Finally, one other thing the Lord Jesus says, if you look at verses 30, excuse me, 29, 30, and 31, he points us to the value that amazingly God in his grace has placed on us who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus talks about sparrows, sparrows that are sold for next to nothing. And yet God so carefully attends these sparrows, these relatively meaningless creatures. He knows when they fall. They never fall apart from him. He is always there attending to them in his sovereignty. And Jesus says, fear not, therefore you are of more value than many sparrows. It's an astonishing statement. It's something that we need to hang on to as disciples, whatever we're facing. It's not to pump ourselves up and think that we are amazing in and of ourselves. We all know that we aren't, hopefully. But the fact that the Lord God gave his only son in the fullness of time to give himself up for sinners, to redeem us, to bear our sins, to remove us from the curse of God, to raise us to everlasting life. This is how much more valuable we are than sparrows. And what we should take from this text is that if we are that much more valuable than sparrows in the eyes of God, how much more near will he be to us in time of suffering? He's near to the sparrows, these meaningless creatures when they die. How close, how intimate will he be with his beloved children whom he gave his only son up to death to redeem. I hope you remember these things. I hope that studying this text as a group blesses you. And I hope that God will prepare all of us to be faithful witnesses to the Lord Jesus Christ in the world. May God bless you.